First of all, we're very grateful for the development presents webinar for giving us such a valuable opportunity to present our work. So uh, we posted the um, our work on BioArchive a couple of months ago, and as a prelector, I'm really um, I'm really grateful that this work can be highlighted by the prelect committee. And so in this particular preprint, we are very interested in this fundamental question, that is how the uh, fertilized egg comes as a single cell can give rise to complex um, tissues um, or the uh, structures such as fetus. And this is a particularly important question in the context of human embryo development, because the more that we can understand this process, the better we can find ways to treat human infertility or the pregnancy disorders. The first critical stage in human embryo development happened in the first week of the pregnancy, which is called the pre-implantation development. This is time when the embryo is free floating in the oviduct before it plunks into the uterus. And the ultimate goal of pre-implantation development is to build this beautiful structure called the blastocyst, which um, comes as a bowl, and you can see um, sort of a, a huge cavity in the middle of the embryo. So it's a hollow structure, and it's comprised by three distinct cell lineages. The most outer cell here, labeled in blue, called trophectodon, that will give rise to placenta. And there's a clump of cells that localize in the inside called inner cell mass that has the capacity to give rise to all embryonic tissues to make the baby itself and also the yolk sac. So each of these three lineages are important for um, the human embryo development. So it's very important to understand how zygotes can give rise to these three distinguished cell lineages, how self decisions occur. Um, direct study on this matter on human embryo can be challenging because of the scarcity of the material. So uh, most of the embryo that we can get come from in vitro fertilization experiments, um, come from the surplus embryos. So um, it's kind of uh, difficult to directly study um, this uh, topics on them. But um, we do know a great deal about the self based decisions from a parallel mammalian model system, uh, which is the mouse embryo. So here I'm showing you bright few images between these two species in the early days of their development. I think you can appreciate that uh, at the morphological level, uh, both, of, both species looks pretty much the same. They undergo similar morphogenic transitions, but that um, for that, first of all, they undergo several rounds of cleavage divisions and they generate many, many cells uh, called blastomeres that are segregated um, and looks identical. And then um, this blastomere somehow comes closer and the boundaries become sort of invisible. Um, this process is actually called compaction to form this compacted murula. And then soon after this, there's this cavity emerge in the middle of the embryo. And as the cavity expands, they form this expanded blastocyst. So the morphological similarity kind of underline that the molecular mechanisms that regulate their development, such as self decisions, might also be conserved. The studies in the mouse embryo suggest that the segregation of three lineages are controlled by two rounds of self fate decisions. The first self fate decision comes right after embryo compaction to segregate the progenitors between trophectodon and the inner cell mass. And this process uh, lays downstream of uh, this critical event, um, a cell biology event called the establishment of apical basal polarization. So what does that actually mean? So here I showed you an embryo, a mouse embryo, that is fully polarized. Um, you can see these beautiful white caps that are localized on the outside. So these caps are called apical domain. Um, so they serve as important signaling centers to, to specify the polarized cells at the trophectodon. In precise form, in the polarized cells, the apical domain induces the yap to translocate into the nucleus, where they can activate the expression of critical transcription factors such as CDX2 and beta 3 to specify the, uh, the polarized cells as trophectodon. Whereas in the apolar cells, in the inner cells, yap is in the cytoplasm, so they express pluripotent transcription factors such as nano and SOX2 to get these apolar cells to become inner cell mass. So we want to understand to what extent is this mechanism hold in the human embryo. And for that, we first ask the question, as the polarity is so important, whether and do the cells, uh, whether and how cells in the human embryo um, polarize. So, the, so we actually uh, earlier characterized that in the mouse embryo, the establishment of the apical domain happened roughly at the same time as the embryo compaction and can be kind of divided into two distinguished stages. In the first stage, um, 
that exactly happened at the embryo compact, the um, affectin, which is a key component in the octomyosin complex, become polarized to the cell concave free surface. And this is followed by the polarization of evolutionary conserved polarity proteins, such as part complex. So um, we want to understand whether this dynamics also um, is kind of like conserved in human. So um, in this end, we fix the human embryo during their compaction process. So that's between day three and day four of human embryo development to stem this key polarity related markers. First of all, during the course of the culture, there's increase of cell number from a cell to some more like 16 cells. And also during the course of uh, this development, um, the, the embryo becomes gradually compacted, as you could tell um, um, from the increase of the uh, intercellular angle. And what we found by looking at the localization of uh, affecting and part complex is that when the embryo is uncompacted at the early ACEL stage on day three, um, you can see that both of them um, affecting part six were not polarized, so they remain homogeneously distributed around the cell cortex. And then as the embryo become compacted, um, so for example, in this trans transient phase, um, you see some of the cells are compacted, the affecting become first polarized to the cell concave phase of this. And at this time, you don't see part complex being polarized. So, um, so that suggests that affectin comes first, that become polarized before part complex that so. And this is exactly what we saw from the mouse embryo, um, indicating that these two species sort of follow the same path dynamics of polarization. And uh, at the end of the culture, at, on day three, we begin to see the co-polarization of affectin and part six. So that reflects on the quantifications, and uh, you can see that there's a, a period of time um, between day three and day four, you can see affecting polarization, but not part six. So that suggests that these two species follow similar dynamics of polarization. Um, so that also leads us to ask whether the upstream regulatory mechanism is also conserved between these two species. In the mouse embryo, we found that this phospholipid is called PLC. It's very important to trigger the effect in polarization and therefore the um, uh, formation of the apical domain. So if you inhibit PLC, um, then you don't really get the apical domain to form. So, so now we want to see whether this um, is actually true in the human. So we uh, treat with a PLC, pan PLC inhibitor um, between day three to day four of the human embryo development. And we found that in different control conditions, part complex become polarized to the cell contact free surface, but the embryo that with PLC inhibited, they don't really have this um, polarization of part six anymore. So um, this also shows from the convocations. So that suggests that PLC might be important for polarization as well. But of course, this is from a collateral treatment and it has potential off targets effect. So in the second set of approach, we use sRNA to downregulate two highly expressed PLC isoforms, in this case, PLC epsilon and PLC beta 1. And we found that the, so um, we did um, QBCR to verify that these sRNAs um, can give um, very high knockdown efficiency. And we found that the uh, sRNA treated embryo, similar to um, inhibitor treated um, embryo, they also lost the apical polarization of PAR6. So these two set of experimental approaches um, and the results suggest that PLC is also important for the human embryo to polarize, similar to that of the mouse. So with this in hand, actually we can ask some specific questions related to cell phase, such as whether polarity is important for the first cell phase decision, um, as, we, uh, as we know from the mouse. Um, so in, in the mouse, there's CAT6, uh, CAT3, and CDX2 that are expressed in the trophactylum. In human embryo, um, CDX2 comes much later, but CAT3 is actually expressed in the early um, time points, early developmental stage. So uh, we want to see whether CAT3 can be restricted and whether CAT3 expression will be affected by um, the apical domain of formation. So um, to this, uh, we kind of fix the embryo, first characterize CAT3 expression, at the early time point, we don't see much GATA3. And after one day culture, we begin to see a lot of GATA3 positive cells. And interestingly, GATA3 at this time point is expressed in both outer and inner cells. But if you quantify the signal intensity, you can see that the polarized cells end up with higher GATA3 expression than the apolar cells. 
So these results suggest that there are polarity dependent and independent pathways that control gadatory expression. Nevertheless, polarity seems to serve as a positive regulator uh, to reinforce gadatory expression in the polar cells. So what's going to happen if you disrupt polarity? Um, we treat the PLS inhibitor between day three and day four of human de development. And we found that um, in control scenario, you got part, part complex to polarize to the outer cells, um, and you also got a lot of gallery expression. But in the PLC inhibited embryo, um, they lose polarity and also um, it give rise to a strong reduction in the gallery expression. So this result suggests that polarity um, in, might be important for the trophactism specification in the human embryo, um, similar to that of the mouse. So all these results lead us to conclude that um, human and mouse embryo have many similar ways in the way that they, come, uh, that they uh, link um, the, the, the form the first two cell lineages. First of all, I showed you that um, the dynamics of polarization is pretty much the same between these two species. Um, as the human embryo compact, they first polarize the affectin, and then they polarize different evolutionary conserved proteins. In the case uh, of this study, I showed you part complex. And then um, not only the dynamics of polarization is similar, but also they share the upstream um, polarity regulators, in this case, the phospholipid C signaling. And thirdly, I showed you that similar to the mouse, the polarity in the human seems also very important to regulate the um, um, trophactor and fake decisions. So we would also like to point out that um, during uh, our paper uh, submission, there's another very important uh, beautiful paper comes from Katnatkin's lab from Crick Institute. Um, they show that if you inhibit the part complex in different ways, they also leads to the reduction of gut three expression, similar with what we saw here. So our two studies actually come together um, to show that the uh, polarity is important for the first linear segregation in the human embryo. So this work is actually can never be done without uh, the collaborations. We collaborate with four different continents, with four IVF clinics, and uh, this work, a uh, majority of the work is done by uh, me with Marta and Angel from Valencia, and Magdalena Janissa Gates Lab received funding from NIH Wellcome Trust, and uh, uh, we received several different fundings uh, uh, with uh, the IVF clinics, and I'm very happy to answer any questions. Okay, so we will now move on to the Q&A session. Um, so first, um, did you check if false nuclear expression of YEP can rescue the cell fate morphogenesis or both? Um, I think that's a very nice point, very good point. Um, we, we haven't tried that because, um, first of all, it's kind of, um, it's a very difficult experiment to inject the human embryo. Um, so, um, but I think this is like a nice idea. So my guess will be that it might be able to, for example, to a certain extent, rescue the expression of GATA3, but probably not cell polarization because it's actually downstream of cell polarity. So I think maybe to the cell fate, but maybe not to the morphogenesis. Mm -hmm. um, second question, so how similar or different are polarization dynamics across different mammals, for example, rabbits or cows? Um, this is interesting question as well. Um, so, so here we compared mouse and human to show that these two species are quite similar. Um, so we haven't checked other species, um, but the, um, the, the parallel uh, publication by Katy Nikens group, they showed that um, the cows also polarized, like um, kind of similar to mouse and human. Um, in terms of other species, I do know that um, hamsters seems to have very different ways to polarize, which is very interesting, but we didn't really look at it like in much detail. 